The Acolyte Episode 3. It's exactly everything that we anticipated, and even more. And on a small side note, women really need to figure out what fire does, because it's getting really annoying at this point. But more about that later. Anyway, the episode begins with a flashback. We see our main protagonist, Main and Osha, when they were kids. And now we will know the horrors that happened to them. Why Mei is a completely nonsense psychopath that wants to kill the Jedi, and Osha is just kind of like meh all around. And the scene starts with them being in a forest. And then there's this cute alien butterfly, and there is a young Mei here. And this scene is supposed to show you that one of them is good and the other one is already kind of evil-ish. So, considering this is made the evil one, what do you think happens here? What happens with the butterfly? Does she swat it away? Well, no. At the beginning, she actually lets the but butterfly, you know, sit, sit on her hand. And it's very cutesy. And then she force chokes it. Yeah, I'm not kidding. But then she lets it away. And then she force chokes it again. I'm not I'm not kidding. She she literally just force chokes the butterfly two times. Uh, but then the day is saved because the good sister Osha comes in and tells her to stop force choking the butterfly. And when she stops, you know what happens? The good one, Osha starts force choking the butterfly for literally no reason. This scene is supposed to show to you that one of the twins is a little bit more kind than the other. But both of them just forge choked an animal for no reason at all. Also, the fact that Osh is capable of using force to this extent kind of completely makes me question everything that has happened previously, considering in episode 1, she was barely ca capable of using the force when she needed to, uh, to escape. And this is just the start. Not a single minute in these 40 minutes makes sense. Oh, and it gets worse. You have the twin moment where they're, I am you, you are me, yay, we're twins. And then we get introduced to everyone else. This is some kind of mother. This is one of the mothers of the two mothers that they have because, well, you know what's happening, don't you? You're a smart little cookie. And she comes out here and says, you cannot be out in this forest. It's dangerous. And I'm like, why is it dangerous? And then later on, turns out the forest is dangerous because there are Jedi on this planet. And that's going to be a whole different mess of nonsense. Oh, yes. In any case, she takes them back to the city. And they have some kind of stronghold fort. Which is clearly made out of stone, by the way. As you can see. Stone and metal. Which are very unflammable, by the way. And at this point, my my head is going uh, going back to the start of the series, and I'm thinking, wait a minute, didn't May kill their family by burning down their house? Everything here is out of metal and brick and stone and whatnot. These things are notoriously well known to not be flammable, in fact, also, if you did not know. But you probably did, because everyone except the show writer somehow magically knows that. And I'm like, oh yeah, I expected initially that the house that they lived in and it burned down was probably like the house of, you know, out of wood, straw, or something like that. But no, 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 it's all stone and metal. Anyway, they go, they meet their other mother. This At this point, it's still the suspense that we don't know that there has been some action, boys! Yeah, the worst kind of action. Star Wars, Vogue Wars action. But this is just the start, and I'm already honestly a little bit unhinged, because, again, not a single minute here makes sense. Anyway, they talk about stuff, and then they go here and have a conversation about the girls. And at this point, I am beyond confused, and this happens at least two more times in this episode. Now, if you're wondering how bad could the writing for this thing possibly be, I am going to quote a part of this, or partially quote, a thing that they said. So, this alien woman right here, who is obviously not white, by the way, of course she's not, 
tells this black alien, well, no, she's just a, a she's just a black woman. I guess she's not alien. She tells her, as the leader, I deferred the matters about them being them them being grown up to you. I, I don't remember the exact wording, but uh, but this uh, this is the part I do remember. As the, she says, as the leader, I deferred the matters of these girls to you. And what do you think that sentence means? That she, as the leader, allowed her to make decisions about the girls? Or is she the leader? And that's why she allowed her to make decisions for the girls? Yeah, this is how confusing the dialogue was. Just one sentence, and you have no idea who the leader is. Because there's just... There's multiple ways you can interpret that. And again, this is not the only situation where in, in this one episode, they have said yes and no in the same sentence with even out a coma. It it's gonna happen more times. Anyway... At this point, they are talking about the girls and how they're Jedi and they're evil, and they say this wonderful line about the Jedi are going more inland. Inland where? There's supposedly literally nothing around here except your covenant of witches. And also at this point, uh, obviously the black one gives, a, gives an astounding speech about, oh no, the galaxy hates people like us. Witches, and that's very cute considering they're all supposed to be thread sensitive and that's right thread sensitive not force sensitive the force doesn't exist the the force is just something misunderstood it's actually threads that you pull on and stuff happens that's actually exactly what this episode by the way tells you I, I i love it so much nothing makes sense and this is just the start okay this is just the first six minutes of the episode and obviously let's just ignore the fact that the, the galaxy is literally governed by jedi and she's saying oh no they hate people like us aka for sen th thread sensitive thread sensitive people okay and that's why their covenant is just running away from place to place, and now they're finally here. Okay, and moving onward, what happens then? Well, you you get this situation where they're teaching the twins how to use the threads, and they're talking about it. Feel the threads, and they're use and, and they're doing these witchy wushy things. And I am pretty sure this is a witch self thing. And if I'm not mistaken, the witch self thing is a thing that women do on TikTok and social media where, where they call themselves witches and cast spells. That this is very heavily, if not fully, inspired by that. Because this is a covenant, all of them are witches, all of them are female. Oh yes, it's absolutely great. Are you following? Because I, I know it's kind of hard to follow, but this this is literally the episode, sadly. And she's, and she's teaching them about the force, a.k.a. the threads that you pull on. And one is weak, but two is strong, and that kind of gets demonstrated. Then she wants to te teach the girls. And I, I have to say, these child actors are just pitifully bad, okay? There is no excuse. I don't care that they're children. There are plenty of movies that have child actors, and they're great. These two are just obnoxious and completely boring. They ruin all the scenes. Here, she, they're demonstrating something, and it is emphasized that both of them are fighting and they're not doing anything. But it's so blatantly visible and loud, you can literally not do anything but look at them. Well, she's trying to teach them something about the threads. And then at the very end, she's like, okay, now I'm gonna use the, thre the threads on you. And they're supposed to, in tandem, use the Force to stop her. And Osha cowers behind May, and May Solo does things, and May gets called gifted, and Osha should do better. Uh, that's essentially the take here. They're kind of portraying that May is more adept than just the Force in general and whatnot. So uh, that's pretty cool. Then the Jedi come, the girls hide, and... 
more, more nonsensical stuff happens. They argue about what's important, what's not important, just to uh, just set out uh, set up the fact that May kind of wants to be a bitch and not leave home, and Osha wants to go out in the wider universe. And by the way, this is important because this episode extremely heavily tries to portray the Jedi as completely fallible and completely evil. Now, we already know the Jedi are extremely fallible because only a moron could not suspect that maybe, maybe the Counselor is a Sith Lord. Just, just, just maybe. Anyway, that, be, uh, that aside... Again, it's set up that these twins are different and the Jedi are evil. That's a very important theme that you need to remember for this. And that the, the Jedi are evil. But the trick here is, the way this whole episode portrays the Jedi, and there's going to be specific examples later, but in general, the way that they do this is so um, unbelievably dumb. Because the, their moms just call the Jedi bad for X. But in reality... Why is eggs bad? Well, the Jedi are bad because they abduct children, and they don't let them make their own choices. But you're literally doing that with your own children. You're not allowing them to do their own choices, and you're forcing them to join the coven and an initiation ritual and all of that stuff. Oh, the Jedi! You just want to be a Jedi because that's currently what you want as a kid, but when you grow up, you will change. But that also applies to your witch covenant. Everything they try to, uh, to say is bad about the Jedi, literally one for one, if not even more honestly, applies to their own witch covenant, which is hilarious. It is just the poorest of writings possible. Anyway, now there's the initiation ritual and stuff's happening. Their hair is getting braided because did you not notice that they have braided hair? Because every black character needs to have braided hair. Oh, also, by the way, that black mom also has obviously the same type of hair because th there's no way. I, I have never seen a black person without hairstyle like this. It's impossible. I think it's genetics. Anyway, they have their stupid ritual. Uh, o Osha doesn't want to do it, but she says, yes, she's going to join the covenant. May is like, yay, I'm a witch now. And then this is the most sad and confusing scene ever. I wish, I wish I could show, you, uh, show it to you. Because they're supposed to in tangent work with the Force. But the reality is, one of them is dancing some kind of techno crap, the other one is just flailing around, and the third one is doing loop-de-loops with their arms. There is, there is no sense of con con cohesency in anything that these witches do. And they're supposed to, like, do things with the force, but every single one of them is just flailing their hands randomly, not in sync, not in anything, just, just randomly. And it's pretty sad. And this goes on for a very, very long time. Uh, we have our Jesus moment, because obviously she matters a lot, and that's very cool. Obviously, who would have expected otherwise? And then at this point, the Jedi come after the girls get initiated and whatnot. Only one gets the Force Applied Tattoo, which is very cool and whatnot, obviously. The other one doesn't because the ritual was slightly interrupted. And here come the Jedi. Oh, yes. We see all of them. We have Matrix. We have Force Field Boy, who's currently a Padawan. We have Hunger Games Dude. And we have the Wookiee that's surprisingly constantly calm, which doesn't make sense because it's a Wookiee! I know, shocking. Anyway, they somehow magically just are there exactly at the right time, and the coven of witches is not really excited about it. As you can see, they're armed. Oh yes, look at this. It's, it's a pointy stick that's kind of made to be almost an axe, I guess. Also, they have space bows. Yeah, not regular bows, but literally space bows. I don't know if I can show it anywhere here, but you can see that they're using not regular bows, but literally what you could only describe as a space bow. 
which is which is completely hilarious and at this point the second line that literally makes absolutely no sense comes in it's the fact that we are the jedi we have jurisdiction over force sensitive children and whatnot and she's like uh we are on a planet that is not governed by the galactic senate or whatever this place is supposed to govern them i don't even it's not governed by Coruscant, effectively. And they're like, ah, yeah, actually, true, big true. And they're like, okay, so the laws of the Jedi don't apply on this planet. So we're just going to leave now. No, this, the, the third most genius, uh, genius sentence after that follows. Aha, uh -huh, maybe we're not on a planet that follows our laws of Jedi and whatnot. And we completely, by the way, respect that, obviously. There is still nothing that can uh, that can stop Jedi from doing the Jedi exam on children. And it's like, wait, 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 wait. So you have no jurisdiction over children because this is not a, uh, this planet is not a part of the Galactic Federation or whatever. So you have no influence here, but nothing can deny you from doing a, a, for, a force sensitivity test on the children. And she's like, oh, oh, you have a point. Yes, nothing can stop that. That is that is big through again. And, and then another completely genius sentence happens. Yes, since we have the authority to test any children that we please, you we're going to test them, but only if you allow it. Wait, what do you mean? How, how do these sentences keep on happening? You have no due jurisdiction here, true, but you're still gonna do whatever the hell you feel like. Oh yeah, true, but only with your allowance. And she's like, ah, oh, yeah, true, okay, do it then, I guess. It's, it's such unbelievably bad writing. It's, it's just insanity. Like, how can you do, do this? I don't even know. And at some point, by the way, uh, they attack the Jedi with the Force, aka uh, Force Field guy. And, you know, they, they kind of turn him into a vegetable with the Force. We don't actually see at any point any single one of them do anything. He just, his eyes just turn black and he's he goes like tomato suddenly. And the Jedi are all, all like, huh, that's kind of funny. They just attacked us. Well, I guess we're just not going to do anything. And then this guy, this guy goes up to Osha and starts reaching for his lightsaber <laughs> and the and the witch cult is like did we just attack them yeah we did uh is he reaching for his lightsaber right now i guess he is i guess let's just let him it's it's so bad and nonsensical none of this makes single shred of logic sense or anything the amount of depravity here is beyond reason for brains. And it's hilarious. And then they release a uh, force field guy from being a vegetable. And they're like, ah, this is kind of chill now, isn't it? And then they're going to get the twins tested and it's going to be super cool. Even though it's kind of portrayed that the witch coven could kind of just wipe the Jedi's out at any moment and make them into vegetables. Because, well, Scissoring created these two children. I don't remember in which point it actually is said about that, but yeah. Uh, these two children obviously are made by two Force women Scissoring or something like that. One was the mother and other implanted them in, in there. You know, the black one implanted obviously them into this one. It was great. It, 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 su super cool. V very progressive. I loved it, in fact. Disney hired me. Anyway, uh, this thing happens. They they get into a scuffle. Should they actually do it? Uh, then the old wise crone of the coven speaks up and says, again, just nonsensical, stupid stuff. We could either let them. I don't. I actually don't remember what she says, but it's something along the lines of, we could let them test them, and it could be good. Or we could let them test them, or it could be bad. I don't remember the text, but it. Again, all this episode tries to constantly do is be deep. 
and it fails at it hilariously. It's absolutely absurd. Anyway, then they start then they start to, to fighting about the fact that their moms want them to fail the Jedi exam because obviously, and Osha wants to succeed. May wants to fail because of reasons, and after that, you know, uh, th they go to the Jedi place and 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 do things. Why did the, why does the why does the Jedi ship and everything around it look like they're a group of traveling gypsies? Don't know. Why couldn't they keep all of this stuff in the ship? Don't know. The Wookiees being, by the way, on you know fixing his. I don't know, space motorcycle or something like that. Then they go in. Nothing happens. She just, oh, she just trails off because May is the one uh, taking the test first. And she, like, goes up to the Wookiee. And she's from the back. And she, like, why are you doing? And he's, like, Rrr! and it's the most non-Wookiee thing ever. And that's pretty much the interaction. Why did the Covenant that doesn't want them to do anything with the Jedi allow her even to speak with him? Don't know. Don't honestly care also at this point. Anyway, stuff happens. No one cares. Osha takes the test. May fails the test because they're supposed to fail the test. And now in this scene, for some reason, Osha, who seemingly is not gifted in the force at any po uh, point, can predict the future through the force because she's... Uh, she knows what's going to be, she she tries to fail the test and then she doesn't fail the test and then she gives away the fact that she wants to fail the test, but she doesn't. She wants to be a Jedi. And I have no idea, and none of this makes honestly sense, but that's the takeaway. And obviously Osha's like, I want to see the galaxy. And then moms are like, no, you're just a kid. You don't know what you want. Join the bitch coven because that's cool. And her sister May is like, yeah, join the witch coven. You're a kid, you don't know what you want. We must always be together because we're twins or something. Anyway, they have a scuffle about this. I don't know what's on sleeve and happening here. I completely blanked out around here. And now the most important part happens. Oh, she's packing up because she's leaving with the Jedi. And it's gonna be cool because Jedi have other children. She's really excited about that. And then May comes in and May's like, I'm not gonna let you leave. We're supposed to be forever. And Osha's like, I don't remember what she did or said. It doesn't matter, honestly. Uh, point being, May says, well, if I can't stop you from leaving, I'll kill you. Now, considering we kind of know that she's supposed to be the evil twin, that does make sense. But how poorly they actually show that she has an evil side to her, this is kind of coming out from the blue if you if you look at it that uh, from that part. And she's like, yeah, I'm gonna kill you. So she, she shuts the clearly metallic door, by the way, and everything, again, is made of stone, and then... And then May takes this lamp thing, and it's a space lamp, obviously. Uh, he here we could see it. Uh, can't can't find it. Oh, come on. Yeah, see? It's a space lamp! Because this is Star Wars, and everything is freaky and spacey. So anyway, she takes the space lamp, and can you guess what she does? That's right, she sets fire to the, uh, to the stone and metal. Yep. She just sets fire with that little lamp to the stone and the metal. The stone and the metal. No, seriously, do women not understand what fire is? I am so questioning life right now. Because you think people, everyone knows this, right? Maybe mansplaining is an integral part of society's survival. I don't know. Anyway, so she sets up to uh, she sets fire to unflammable things, and now Osha needs to run out because stone burns fast, obviously. And this is already shown where she magically just knows how to do electronics. You know, she she didn't slowly learn and become a mechanic. 
by the way, which is literally just a space mechanic, but it can't be called space mechanic because this is Star Wars, so it's called a Micnic, obviously. Duh. So, it's already shown that, oh, wait, she didn't actually slowly over time learn to do things. She was just gifted from the start. So she just removes this panel at random and starts doing, starts connecting two wires that are for some reason not connected in the first place. I don't even know why. They're naked wires. And she opens up a path and she gets out. And obviously, since stone and metal burn really fast, uh, the whole place is on fire. The whole temple is a blazing fire, okay? And everyone's dead. Everyone's just com completely gonzo at this point. Uh, all of the force sense, uh, all of the force sensitive, I mean, thread sensitive bitches, they're also, by the way, completely 100% dead. And at this point, the twins meet. They have already seen that all their moms are dead. Uh, they're not burnt, they're not anything. They're just lying on the floor, dead from something, I guess. I, I have no idea, honestly, what they... They're just dead, okay? Deal with it. That That's how it is. They're just dead, okay? Well, obviously, one of the moms probably survives and becomes Smilo Ren, but that's that's a reveal for another time, most likely. A sad, probably a sadder episode. <laughs> probably an even sadder episode. Anyway... At this point, Ocean may meet up. Ocean is like, did you kill our, you killed our family? No, she doesn't even mention that. They, they're just like acting like nothing happened and this is an accident. And May didn't cause this, which is hilariously stupid, by the way. Uh, the Jedi run inside. Oh, here you can actually see all, all, all of the witches being very non-witchy and not alive -y and and whatnot. Somewhere, maybe. And then uh, May falls in into the thing, which seems not that honestly deep and okayish. And um, Space Squid Games uh, catches Osha. Whoa, you know he he saves her. Oh, here you can see actually all uh, all of the uh, all of the you know vomit dead. And yes, all of this burned down because it's made out of stone, and stone's very flammable. It's great. Trust me. Trust me. Anyway, Osha survives, and if you if you are left at this point with many questions, that's like to be expected. Because I explained literally everything that happened in this episode in the best way possible, and by the way, in the most charitable way possible in a lot of situations. I actually gave context that kind of was tricky to gauge, because most of the things that you see in this episode kind of go over your head because they're conveyed so poorly and dumbly. And also, this is why Forcefield guy decided to kill himself when May approached him. Yeah. Yeah. They, they're all heartbroken because they did this. The, the Jedi are completely not responsible for this. May is a literal psychopath murderer. <laughs> That's what this actually is. The, 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 those four Jedi did nothing wrong. In fact, they didn't even attack the Covenant when the Covenant clearly threatened to make make force. Ah, he's white. That's why no one cared when they t said that they're going to turn him into a... Oh, that actually suddenly makes sense. <laughs> that's an actual revelation. That's why they didn't care about anything that's happening. Because he was white. And if he turns into a potato, that's fine by them, probably. Oh, boy. Uh, but yeah. I have no idea. This is why Forcefield guy decided to off himself because he's clearly responsible for everything that May did, which is crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Who, who in their right mind can watch this and say, "Oh yeah, the Jedi are evil, and that's why that, that that's why May is a psychopath." No. No one is going away with that revelation. It's just absolute bonkers stupidity. Oh, and then at the end of this uh, end of the scene, somewhere here, yeah, you, you can you can see that May survived and she's outside. Uh, is she burned? No. Is she even slightly dirty? No. Obviously, by the way. And by the way, this is not even a reveal. Considering this is a flashback, we know that May survived. Obviously, <laughs> but they just. Throw it in there, because why honestly not at this point? Anyway, 
This is an absolute catastrophe. The best part about the Acolyte is that the last six minutes of the show are the ending screen. <laughs> that's the unironic best part about the Acolyte, that you can shave six minutes off because that's the ending credits. And they say episode four is going to be as bad. This is crazy. This is legitimately crazy. Nothing makes sense. I don't know what to say. It's kind of hilarious, though. I love it. But man, man, is it stupid. Anyway, this is Quizzer Sits in. Bye-bye.